speech is they terminated. Will, they will they be I've cautioned the member. Uh, Sir William CEO. Thank you, Mr Chairman. <laughs> I, I would have thought, sir, that the debate on part two, which is the more substantive part of the bill, is a debate that's probably overarching and probably you'll hear quite uh, robust discussions from this side of the House. So when my colleague there who spoke just then, uh, the uh, member Andrew Williams, talked about dog tucker, it reminds me, sir, of a are saying that the farmers will appreciate, and that is it does not matter how much perfume you pour on pig cucker, it stinks. <laughs> it still stinks. And, and that's really, sir, how many people that, uh, that I have heard from uh, refer, to this, refer, refer to this bill and the way this government is treating the members of the public, particularly the people of Canterbury. Sure. This substantial part of part two is essentially removes the, the promise, breaks the promise that they made that the elections would be this year, 2013, and now is saying the elections will take place in 2016. This part of the bill also establishes um, this review in 2014. Now, the questions being asked by my colleagues here, Dr. Megan Woods and Clayton Cosgrove, as to whether there would be public consultation um, for that review, that's an important question, sir, that needs to be addressed. And I would hope the minister, any minister, uh, would confirm if there's public consultation on this. And I'll tell you why, Mr. Speaker. Whatever the case uh, in this, behind this bill, the people of Canterbury have told this, the committee that there is no justification for right. cancelling their elections. As ratepayers, Canterbury residents deserve a say in who represents them and makes decisions on their behalf. The people of Canterbury, sir, feel strongly that this is a basic right. And this has been backed up by numerous submissions. The Chief Human Rights Commission, David Rutherford, submitted that, and I quote, our view continues to be that the undemocratic way in which the original legislation was introduced and its continuance is simply wrong from a human rights perspective. And so I have to say, residents have been outraged over their treatment time after time. This government either fails to act for them, to consult or listen to them, or overrides their rights for the government's goals. Now, if there is any doubt about the passion of the people of Canterbury, so I refer you to 19 September 2002, 12, the day after the first reading of this bill, well, there was a protest at the Bridge of Remembrance in Christchurch against the axing or merging of 31 local schools and a decision to delay the Environment Canterbury election until 2016 and the perceived loss of democracy in that city, that entire city, sir, uh, if you don't believe that, 27th of September 2012. Christchurch City Council voted overwhelmingly to express its opposition to the move and to seek a meeting with the Minister to ask why the election was postponed. Um, December 12th, 1,000 strong crowd rallied in Lanham Square calling for a return to democracy. And they were protecting... Now, so that's just examples, sir, of how the people of Canterbury are saying to this government, we want our democracy back. You do not... The government does not have the right to remove uh, the basic rights that these people are entitled to. Now, so I'm going to ask the question, will the minister confirm whether there will be public consultation um, in terms of the review? And I'll tell you, this is so important because if there is silence from that side of the House, then I'm going to refer uh, this House to the regulatory impact statement. And it says we recognise that there has not been a Crown-led public consultation process with Canterbury stakeholders and communities on the options in the regulatory impact statement. In our view, it would be appropriate for further specific consultation to be undertaken. Now, here it is, the authors of the regulatory impact statement identifying that there's been no public consultation prior to this bill being introduced, sir. Now, if there is silence that this government will not confirm one way or the other that they will uh, uh, involve 
the people of Canterbury in this review, then this is the message that will remain, sir, that there is no intention by... Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair. See you, sir, will you see you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm just saying, if the government does not confirm one way or the other that it is their intention to consult with the public over the, the review in 2014, then the message will remain with the people of Canterbury and the general public that they do not intend to do so, despite the rhetoric from some on that side of the House. And, sir, I think it is important because, despite the, an earlier comment from that side of the House, I agree with uh, Mr Andrew Williams. Overwhelmingly, the submissions made by the public on this bill has been a general no, a general vote against this bill. Let me quote some of the names. I think this is important. Adam Brazel, uh, they vote against this bill. They say the removal of voting rights and democratic procedures is wrong. The taxation of Canterbury residents without representation is something that they are up in arms about. Alan McRae opposes the bill. Angela McPherson opposes the bill, believes that the government's plan for Canterbury is a takeover of governance and resources. Annette and Michael Haplett opposes the, election, uh, the elections being delayed to 2016, concerned that the bill will continue to undermine water conservation orders. Chris Horn opposes the bill. Cliff Mason opposes the bill. Dick Leleur, Deleur opposes the bill. Uh, Dr. Bronwyn Hayward opposes the bill. Edward Snowden opposes the bill. Elsie Edgerton Dill opposes the bill. George Moon opposes the bill. Helen Elizabeth Lowe opposes the bill. James Adams opposes the bill. Sir, Mr. Chair, what I'm pointing out here is these are real people in Canterbury who are opposed to what this government is proposing. I have heard uh, tonight that they, they intend to do consultation for this review, but uh, we're asking on this side of the House, will the Minister confirm one way or another that they, the people of Canterbury, will be consulted in the review that this bill uh, introduces? And if they will consult with them, sir, uh, then they need to tell us tonight if that's going to be the case. And I tell you why, if, they, if the government does not say one way or the other tonight, then the people of Canterbury are left with what is in the regulatory impact statement where it says the public weren't consulted. And they should have been consulted, particularly when this government breaks the promise. 2013 is this year. The end of this year, the rest of New Zealand, we will conduct the election of our local body uh, officials, representatives, except for Canterbury. Canterbury people expect it to elect their own representative. It is not right, and I point out, in this particular section too, sir, that, um, that we're talking about tonight, not only does, is the government removing elected representatives, but it then goes ahead and pays the elected representatives from the rates of the people of Canterbury who haven't had a say about who their representatives are. And so, sir, it is really very, very important that the government be quite clear. Are they going to consult with the people of Canterbury over what they, uh, over this bill and the proposed review or not? It's a simple question. And I'm hopeful that the new minister there in the chair would take up the, the reins. And as I've said before, sir, I've listed off names of individuals who have taken the time to come before the select committee and oppose this particular bill. I think the least that this government can do, sir, is to invite those people, the, those people, to come forward and talk about why it is that they oppose the change, uh, the postponement of the, the election that this government is proposing, sir. It's a simple fact, sir. If, you're, if the government is going to use taxpayer money to pay for certain individuals, to run a city, it is the right of the people paying taxes to be able to elect those representatives. That is not the government's right. And, and I pose the question again, sir, is this the kind of New Zealand that we are, uh, uh, is this the kind of future that we're, we're looking towards under this government? Right. That any time you dislike the people's representative, you remove them? Absolutely. You chuck them out? Is that the kind? 
Is this, well, yeah, absolutely. Is this the Bainamarama culture that uh, has been brought in? Is this government just too close to Frank Bainamarama that that's the sort of thing that's, that we can foresee in the future, Mr. Speaker? Because if it is, I tell you, the people of Canterbury will vote this government out. Calling Mojo, Mojo Mathis. Thank you.